The wall. It's our armor. It protects us from what lies beyond. But out there... You either live with the choices you make... ...or die trying to change them. The story doesn't end here. And that's right. We have the game's director right here. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Absolutely. My pleasure. And we're going to get a little look at some of the gameplay. We have Ramon Russell as well. What's happening? So, John, tell me a little bit about um, where BioWare's head was at when it came to creating Anthem. It's a bit of a departure for the studio. Absolutely. I think that, honestly, when you look at the history of BioWare games, we've always been evolving the way that we approach storytelling. And uh, if, like from Baldur's Gate, to uh, Jade Empire, Knights of the Old Republic, yeah. Mass Effect and Dragon Age, right? We've always tried to, to uh, change up and evolve the way we uh, tell stories, and we felt that what we're doing at the Anthem is really the next kind of evolutionary step uh, for Bioware. Now, Bioware with uh, Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 definitely uh, had a presence in that co-op world. Absolutely. That was something you guys have definitely tried, uh, played around with, but uh, Anthem is taking that to a different level. So yes. tell me about, you know, sort of that co-op emphasis and why that was uh, such a critical part of this game. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, really wanted uh, Anthem to be a very natural uh, cooperative experience and social experience. Because it's a great thing to experience with your friends just to get together uh, and play in this big world that we've created. Uh, and we felt like, yeah, that's, that's the right thing. Telling stories has always been a very social experience, right, you know, in our history. Uh, and we felt that that was just a supernatural step. Great, and we have uh, a little bit of Anthem footage. We can start running that now. Great. We'll continue our discussion. We'll point out anything that looks interesting, which I'm sure will be quite a few things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so speaking indeed. Speaking of, of Mass Effect, that's obviously one of the things Bioware is very, very much known for. What lessons did you take moving from the Mass Effect series going to a, mass, a massively multiplayer online game? That is a good question. You know, uh, it's really all about how you think about story. Uh, and taking it from that uh, kind of plane of, well, you have a, a great told, crafted story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and kind of bringing it to a more open world perspective. We're now, we're still telling that crafted story, but then we're layering on top of that a big world conflict story that we won't really solve because we want you to go out into the world of Anthem and always be a hero. And then there's that cool storytelling that goes on between players where you know, you're playing together or you've been playing at them and you get together the next day at school or at work and you talk about the awesome adventure you just had with your buddies. Uh, and that's a really cool experience and that's a piece of storytelling too. And we wanted to uh, kind of extend our reach into that and let the players start to tell each other awesome stories in this setting that we've created. That's awesome. So this week was the first time people actually got to see gameplay of Anthem. How has the response been? The response has been overwhelmingly just positive and wonderful. It's so nice to be able to take something that you've been laboring over for so long and keeping secret and just be able to finally share it with everybody. Rockets and robots, who doesn't love that? It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the shared world that you're creating with this game. So well, every, uh, every session of Anthem is uh, hosted on dedicated servers. So when we're out playing in the world, whether we're grouped together or not, we're all going to experience the same day and night times, the same weather the same uh, big world events. So it's an experience that, again, even if we weren't grouped together that night, we can get together at work that or school the next day awesome. and talk about that experience. But we, because we want to tell a very uh, crafted and well-told story, uh, you get your story consequences in uh, places like Fort Tarsus, which is your own personal hub, and that's where you'll see the consequences. Oh, of your actions. Right. We're seeing these javelin suits, sorry to interrupt, we're seeing these javelin suits here and these things are uh, certainly formidable looking. Absolutely. These javelin suits are the things that give you kind of super heroic powers and allow you to go out into this crazy world and, uh, and survive and thrive and have adventures. Uh, each javelin can be considered as a kind of a class, but the cool thing about it is instead of having to restart the game if you decide you don't like this class, uh, you play as a pilot, a freelancer pilot, and a freelancer can own many javelins. Nice. So when you go out that night, you just might be feeling like, hey, I want to play my Colossus tonight. Or you may be going on a mission 
that uh, requires you to play as a storm or as a ranger. It's really up to you. There's a lot of freedom in the system, uh, and you get to kind of play with that as you see. Right, so you have the four classes, and then you can customize your javelins even deeper inside Absolutely. the classes, correct? Right? Okay. Yeah, so even if we're both playing ranger or colossus, the way we do the loadouts, the type of gear you've gotten, the type of gear I've gotten, it's going to make it feel really different. Uh, that's really nice to hear. Now, what can you uh, tell us about this world that we're seeing here? I mean, is this an alien planet? Or is this Earth in the far future? Right. This is a planet that's separated from Earth in time and space. Okay. It's completely separate. And while there are humans on this world, they're not Earthlings. Oh, I see. Right. This is a world that was left unfinished by its gods, the Shapers. Mm. And so they were making the world, and they just abandoned it for who knows why. And so it's left things like this. You see this gigantic shaper relic that's up there. looks like a big pulsing light. These are the tools of the gods that, that were used to create this world. And they turn on, and they create havoc. And it's up to the freelancers to go out and silence those relics. This is super cool. Yeah, I mean, um, incredible. this combat looks really exciting here. It looks like a freeze bomb. A lot of interesting. Uh, kind of dynamic uh, ways to sort of combo these different attacks together. Absolutely. Uh, what we saw there was an epic frost grenade but that the Ranger had and a legendary multi-mortar on the Colossus. So you can chain together combos using different status effects. Again, it's a very wide-ranging and a very playful system that allows you to explore. I heard you say legendary launcher. So is that going to be different classes? Absolutely. Different rarities of, of gear and weapons. Uh, that one happens to be a legendary multi-mortar. What the hell is that? Now, I, I think I've caught a glimpse of maybe some loot dropping. Is that a, a, a factor in this game? And tell me how it works. Absolutely. Uh, so as you uh, go through the world fighting and exploring, you will find different loot. The rarities are pretty much right what you expect. Uh, common, uncommon, rare, epic. Epic. <laughs> Masterwork and legendary. Uh, so yeah, there's a, and each, uh, each piece has different specs different statistics, so there's always uh, the chance that you could go out and get a better piece of gear. Always fun to chase. That's great. Now, is there sort of a linear storyline that these four players, I know it's also playable just yourself if you want to, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the main storyline uh, pits the freelancers against uh, one of their uh, strongest enemies, the Dominion, uh, and that will be the, the contents of the critical path. But really, that's just the beginning of the game. It really just teaches you how to play the game and, and gives you a tour of the world. The real game really opens up after you've completed that great story. Oh, nice. So, so I think a lot of people were really, really asking the question is, this is a multiplayer game, squads are full. What if I just want to play by myself? Yeah, and absolutely. Yep. If you want a lone wolf, you can play through the story missions by yourself if you want. You can also go out and just explore the world uh, by yourself. There will be other people on your server with you. But you don't have to group with them. You can just go out and do your thing. Music to a lot of people's ears. Awesome. Now, are you looking, because there is such a, a strong multiplayer component to this, not mandatory, but that's clearly, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun to play in multiplayer. Yeah. Are you looking at ways to kind of bring people back and keep them playing over a long period of time? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We always want to give our players reasons to come back and be delighted by this really mysterious world. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing events. We'll be doing uh, things that we'll talk more about later in detail, sure. but we're absolutely planning on giving you lots of reasons to come back. This is a game that's in it for the long haul. We're going to be seeing a lot of Anthem, it sounds like. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. that's great. Now, uh, from a Mass Effect perspective, obviously uh, what, one of the bigger successes to come out of uh, BioWare, among countless others, but I mean, it's one I think that's so synonymous with the studio. Are there lessons that you have learned from sort of storytelling or other things like that, or the RPG mechanics themselves that have found their way into Anthem? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the, the Anthem team is comprised of uh, many uh, Bioware veterans, and we've taken all of those lessons uh, from all the way back from Baldur's Gate, uh, oh, yeah. through, way uh, back, Dragon Age Inquisition and Mass Effect Andromeda, and we've incorporated that into how we've built this game. We've poured our hearts and our souls into it, and uh, our craftsmanship as well. That's great. What, what is this creature here? This is an Ash Titan. Uh, he's by a world event, so as you're exploring the world, uh, you will find amazing things like this Titan. And you and your squad can decide to fight them. You can decide to go on about your business like we're going to right here and go into this Stronghold. Now, Stronghold is a purpose-built four-player adventure. It's one cool. of uh, higher-level challenges in the game and will uh, require a little more coordination between you and your squad of freelancers. That's great. And, and what are some of the ways, you know, we've been talking about these uh, javelin suits, uh, that's the thing that really uh, stands out in this game instantly. 
Uh, are there ways to sort of customize them or, 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 or tailor them to your play style? Yeah, absolutely. So personalization, you can make it look just the way you want to make it look. There's a very deep and robust personalization system. That goes out to include different changes to the suits itself. And then customization goes down to gear and loadout. So you see we've got two Colossuses that we were seeing on the screen here. One of them has a flamethrower and a flame mortar on it. The other one has a rail gun and that legendary uh, multi-mortar. So one's built for close-up fighting, one's built for distance fighting. Awesome. So yeah. You said rail gun. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I pre-order in as soon as we get off the stage. <laughs> so you're trying to get a player tons of options to customize the job. Absolutely. I think one of the key things that we really wanted to deliver on was the ability to give the players freedom to approach this game the way they want to approach it. You know, if you want to tackle a challenging piece of content like this with four storms, which is our light suit, I mean, that's a crazy challenge, but you could do it. You could take that video, you could upload it, show it to all your friends. Uh, that's a good thing. All right, John, thank you so much for stopping by. Absolutely. Anthem looking fantastic. Um, thank you very much. You know, I mean, I always expect big things out of Bioware, but uh, I love to see this. It's, it feels like you're sort of, you're liberated, you're sort of tackling a whole new uh, world that I've never seen you tackle before. So, and I love this co-op element as well. So looking forward to big things with that one. And it's coming out in February. Yes, February 22nd on the PlayStation 4. Like and share if you enjoy the video and think others might benefit from this. And of course, subscribe and hit the notification button if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video.